you're someone who has been wanting to figure out how to homestead. You're currently living in, let's say, an apartment, very little savings, you're working a nine to five job. Do not have the assets or yet the experience to be able to just go from your apartment to owning land and having a homestead. And you're not really looking for a handout. You're not trying to say, hey, I want the government to be able to give me land. Let's say maybe you're an immigrant into this country and good work ethic, but you don't know all the steps it takes to go from an apartment complex to owning land, homesteading, and really living that less stress, more freedom life. Today, we're going over that right now. Hey y'all, welcome to the Better Together Homestead. My name is Bo Brotherton, where I teach you how to live that less stress, more freedom life. And this is the video that I think I wish I would have made at the height of all of the freebie stimulus money, because I think I kind of overstepped something, that there are some people that are wanting to know, how do I go from owning nothing to where Bo and Kelly are of having seven acres, two different kind of buildings that you can live in, debt freedom, but without really any money, any assets. That's what we're going over today. Now, this is going to be, it's kind of a long one. It is 20 steps. So you gotta think this is not like a, hey, this is my top five. This is a full on life plan. And I got the inspiration from this while we were making our Get Off Your Tail and Homestead course. Link down below so that you can get onto that waiting list so you can get the introductory lower price whenever we launch next month. And I got something really exciting for you. Everything we're talking about in this video, you can get it down below in an easy to follow one page guide link down below in the description. So you gotta think this is sort of like a snowball. So think of the picture of you have this tiny little like avalanche or like some sort of snow falls on the top of a mountain and then it starts rolling and it's just little bitty and little bitty and then it starts getting a little bit bigger and then as it's rolling down the mountain, it gets bigger and bigger and it just starts snowballing. Dave Ramsey actually has what he calls his debt snowball. So that's where you start getting momentum. That's what we're going over today. There's a little bit of debt snowball in this, but there's also a lot of homesteading skills that are going to what's called function stack, where it's working smarter, not harder. Number one is you're gonna get your personal finances in order. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lower your expenses, you're going to make more than you spend, and you're also going to get out of debt. So you're gonna hear a lot of people that say, spend, less than you make. As we're going into a recession possibly, it's gonna be a lot stronger. You're gonna have more control if you figure out a way to make more than you spend. Yes, lower your expenses, but also at the same time, lower those expenses, raise that income. So again, I'm talking to the person who isn't afraid to work, so that might be taking some extra shifts in your job, that might possibly be getting a second job, or what we're gonna talk about later is maybe getting a side hustle. Number two, if you're living in an apartment, one of the easiest livestock to get in an apartment, you guys, it's worms. You're gonna start learning the skill of raising vermicomposting worms. I'm telling you, it's amazing. It was the very first living creature that we started raising when we were in suburbia and you can do the exact same thing in an apartment. They're also called Red Wigglers. I'm gonna put a link to a great channel of Natalie, who's good friends of ours, down below. Go check out her channel. She goes over everything there is about raising Red Wigglers, because it is the absolute best compost that you can put in your garden, on your land, and everybody knows that fertilizer prices are skyrocketing. So, vermicomposting worms. Okay, so number three, while you're doing number one, getting your finances in order, then number two, you're getting the red wiggler composting worms, but as they're eating all of your kitchen scraps, what they do is they poop, the amazing worm poop. Then what you can do is you can take the worm poop and learn how to make compost tea. 
You guys, now that I'm here on our seven acres, it's a super, super dry land. We haven't had rain for the last 10 weeks. I am seeing how having biology in the soil is the most important thing. So that's where I'm, I'm actually going back to my roots of learning how to compost and how to have compost tea. I wish I would have perfected this back in suburbia. So making compost tea is something you can easily do on a balcony. Okay, number four, you're gonna start a container garden on your patio. Start learning how to grow things, yes, that you can eat, but also that are going to be a function stacking element that are gonna feed not only you, but it can also feed animals in the future. So learn the skill of growing leafy greens. Things like sweet potato, things like any kind of lettuce, those things you can be able to feed livestock in the future. Great thing about sweet potatoes, it can even be an ornamental plant. You can grow sweet potatoes on a back patio. No one would ever think, they just think that it's a ornamental sweet potato, or you can even grow those things inside of your apartment in the winter. They, yes, they will overwinter inside your apartment. It's just a pretty plant. It just vines. You can shape it to make whatever shape you want. It is a great, great plant to learn. And then also if you get any kind of potatoes, that's just a bonus because sweet potatoes are high, high nutrition. Okay, number five, you're gonna learn to cook. So while you're doing all these skills, you're getting your finances in order, you're learning how to compost, you're learning how to grow a little bit, then you're gonna learn how to cook. Instead of buying boneless chicken breasts at the grocery store, which is super expensive and just a one meal that you can make, instead, learn to buy an entire whole chicken and learn how to cook that whole chicken. I think Kelly does it, it's called spatchcock, where basically she cuts the backbone out and then she uh, lays it flat on the cooking sheet and then you, you, you just bake that in the oven learn how to get where you are cooking bacon save the bacon grease then you rub that bacon grease all over your chicken salt and pepper you get that crispy skin Mwah! it's so good then when you eat the whole chicken you can you eat the meat first like you eat the legs you eat the wings so good then you can use that chicken breast and you can make things like a second meal of like sandwiches or something like that. Like learn how to bake sourdough bread. You make sandwiches with that white meat that's, you know, good, but it's not as yummy as that dark meat whenever it first comes out. Then whenever you are done with those two meals, as you are eating your bones, you're saving your bones. Then you take those bones, you put them in a crock pot, instant pot, something like that. You can make a stew, put some veggies in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's still plenty of meat on that bone. You take this home, throw it in a pot, add some broth, a potato, baby, you got a stew going. Then you can even have bone broth, which is high, high nutrition. So as you are doing this, this is number six, as you're doing the first five, you are learning skills and you're also gaining confidence in yourself because you're growing a little bit of food. You're learning new things. You are waking up a little bit earlier because you want to be able to take care of your plants, you're wanting to check out your worms, you're staying up a little bit later, you're getting motivated, you're watching a little bit less TV. What that means is you're becoming a more reliable human in the workplace. So what you're then gonna do is you're going to get a raise from your day job or you can end up getting a better job with better pay. Again, you're gonna start an online business side hustle. So number six, is you're gonna be start making a little bit more money. There could be possibly a big gap between this, but this is the steps. You're gonna be doing all the first six things that we talked about previously. Number seven is you're gonna buy some land. You're saving up money, you're learning some of these basic homesteading skills, learning how to compost, learning how to grow a little bit of food, you're learning how to cook better, you're making a little bit more money. Then if you're going from an apartment some of you might just skip over these steps. It's uh, totally up to you. What Kelly and I did, we went from the apartment to suburbia. So that might be some of the land that some of you end up taking to where you are renting in an apartment, you're making a little bit more money, you're getting more confidence, and then you take a small baby step, you go from an apartment to a starter home in suburbia. You can go from renting to 
owning a home and building a little bit of equity so that your rent isn't just being thrown out of the window. Now again, this is in 2022. I don't want to date this video. I'm not sure if you're watching this a year from now, what's going on with the housing market. I believe that the housing market is going to be going down a little bit. So I think that right now, possibly it's cheaper to rent than it is to buy a home. But I think that the market is going to equal those out during this next recession. So it might be perfect timing if you start planning this and 12 to 18, maybe 24 months from now, you're doing those first steps and then you're saving that money and then the market comes down and it's your right time to buy a starter suburban home. Another option, you could just totally skip the suburban home, but it takes a certain kind of person, certain kind of family. Perhaps you wanna buy raw land, really cheap, and get a used RV. If you're just single or if you're married without any kids, that makes it a lot easier for you to move onto your raw land in an RV. Number eight, now that you have a little bit more space, you're in suburbia, you have a backyard. The backyard, you're gonna start upping your composting game. You're gonna start getting some wood chips delivered because if you're in suburbia, my goodness, that's where you can get wood chips all day long. All right, so number nine is you're gonna begin an online, either Etsy, eBay, or anything like that type of online store, and you're gonna start selling. So now you're gonna be able to start taking all the skills that you learned back in the apartment and also here in suburbia, and you're gonna start selling some of your plants. So start learning how to sell your sweet potato slips. There are sweet potato slips on Etsy all day long. You're also gonna start saving some seeds from your greens that you've learned. You're gonna do some seed swaps. You can even have an Etsy shop to where you're selling your worm poop. All right, number 10, you see how things are starting to snowball a little bit. We're halfway there. So now that you have gotten all these skills, you've been able to buy some property, your confidence is going up and up and up. Your motivation is going up. Your problem solving skills are going up and up and up. You are just cranking it. Now's the time that you're gonna go get a second raise in your day job. So you're going to go take all that knowledge, all that confidence, you're gonna go back into your job and say, hey, I need another raise. Because remember, this could be a couple of years. Or you up your online business game to where you figure out how to make a little bit more money in a side hustle to where you are now making more income in your side hustle, your online business. All right, number 11, you're gonna get more livestock. This is where it starts getting fun you're going to get rabbits. Definitely go check out my video of why rabbits should be your first animal on the homestead. So what you're gonna do here is this is where things start snowballing. Things start going even faster, even bigger. You are gonna take rabbit poop and you're going to feed it to your composting worms. Somehow, Rabbit poop for composting worms, it's not only a food for the worms, but it's also a bedding for the worms. I don't understand it. That's like Charlie in the Chocolate Factory eating your house. It's so weird. That's why rabbits and worms pair so well together. You can then even up and snowball your Etsy online store game and you can sell rabbit poop. I know it sounds crazy. All right, number 12. You have so much fertilizer coming now. You're making compost. You're making compost tea. You have worm poop for your garden beds to be able to sell. You have rabbits that are feeding your worms now. You have rabbits that are pooping extra that are going onto your garden. You're able to sell all of this stuff. What you're going to start doing now is you're going to up your garden now. So you're gonna start growing lots and lots of greens. You're gonna have patio gardens. You're gonna be able to have garden beds. You're going to start taking those greens. This is why we started learning how to grow greens in the very beginning is because now those greens can be fed back to your rabbits. So whenever you first got your rabbits, you're having to feed the rabbits a little pellet food. Now you are able to feed all of the weeds, all of the sweet potato vines, all of the leafy greens, you can feed that back to your rabbits and lower 
your feed bill. Number 13, you're going to start growing fodder trees. You're gonna grow fodder trees, you're gonna sell the cuttings, you're gonna feed those fodder trees back to your rabbits, you're also gonna use them as compost activators. Favorite fodder species that I like, white mulberry, hybrid poplar, hybrid willow, you can also do, like we we're talking about, sweet potato vines. That's the ground cover. Uh, I love com comfrey, but you can feed comfrey to your rabbits. A little bit limited to the other ones, but you can totally feed those to your rabbits and to your future livestock. I really love Ruelia. Rabbits love that. All of these things, you're going to learn how to grow them. You're going to learn how to do cuttings to where you can sell these cuttings online on your Etsy store. We're doing it. Things are snowballing. You're gonna start breeding your rabbits. That's number 14. Start breeding your rabbits. That just means that you're going to increase your availability to make more money. You can sell the breeding stock. We were able to sell rabbits for anywhere between 15 to sometimes $35 per little bunny. And y'all, rabbits breed like rabbits. There's so many bunnies that are gonna pop out. It is amazing. Number 15 is get chickens. This is gonna get you some eggs. You are gonna be able to sell some of these eggs because you are in suburbia. So you're gonna sell some of the eggs. You're able to now feed some of the rabbit poop back to the chickens. They're gonna scratch it up and make even better compost. You can feed the worms to the chickens and all the bugs from all your compost. You're now also gonna be able to take some of your meat scraps because so far, you haven't really been able to compost all of your meat like in your bones. Now that you have chickens, you can take all the leftover meat from cooking and you can feed that back to the chickens. All right, number 16. When you have enough money saved up, you're going to buy land. So either you've already bought land and you were living in a cheap RV or you chose to buy a suburban property, build up that equity, and now it's time to sell that suburban home and buy land. We're talking somewhere between three to 10 acres is plenty and perfect. Now, if you wanna go a little bit larger than that, then you are gonna be able to have a greater legacy to where you can give some land to your children. We talk a lot about building a legacy lifestyle. That's what we wish we would have done. We only have seven acres. It's okay. I, I prefer having seven acres to no acres, but I do wish I had like 20 plus so that I could give some of this land to my children. All right, man, so things are really starting to crank. You get this now? You are now on your property. You're now what everybody considers your homesteading. And unlike us, you have skills now once you get to your property. So the first thing you do whenever you're on your property, you're already composting. You're already making compost tea. You already have done this. You've been spraying compost tea all over your land to be able to build up all of that biology, all of that organic matter on your property. You have your rabbits. You have your chickens. You already know all of these skills once you are on your land. So what you can do next, number 17, is you're going to get a family milk cow. Now, it's hard for me to say that I wish we would have done this first. So now with Goldie, our milk cow, we're producing one and a half gallons every single morning. And we've already grown two calves with her that we're able to sell our Jersey heifer and make a profit. And we have Taco, our bull calf that we're gonna castrate, and he's gonna be taco meat eventually. A family milk cow can feed everything. It's by far the coolest animal on our property. We love Goldie. They're just our favorite animals. Number 18, man, things are rolling. So you're going to start harvesting your cow manure and you're gonna make these ginormous piles of compost. You're going to be able to make so much more compost tea now. You already know how to do it. You've already seen the benefits. I keep on saying coming back to compost tea, compost tea, compost tea. Now, number 19 is you're gonna start raising some pigs. You're gonna have pigs. I love the Idaho pasture pigs because they just are carrying such a high premium right now. We only had two piglets and we sold both of them as breeding stock because we just got lucky and they were both great breeders, females. 
We sold them both for $400 a piece, but, but you're gonna have breeding stock, you're gonna get pork, you're gonna, pigs are great composters. You can take all of the extra bones from your compost, because the chickens, they don't eat the bones. But you take any kind of animal bones and you feed it to a pig and they're gone. They are somehow can just eat all of the bones. It's awesome. They will till a garden for you. They'll clear a little bit of land for you. Of course, you can take the extra milk from your milk cow and you can feed it to a pig to be able to fatten those piggies up if you ever wanna have feeder pigs. I love what John Seymour says in his book, The Self-Sufficient Life and How to Live It. He says that the pig is the gentleman that pays the bill. Like, how cool is that? You have your family milk cow that really helps run everything, but the pig, that's the animal that says, hey, don't worry, here's just $400 there. Hey, here, don't worry. You want, you want us to be able to sell some bacon? Who doesn't want to buy some bacon? You want some pork chops? Who doesn't want to buy some pork chops? Like all of these things, it is a piece of cake to sell from the pig. All right, last one, number 20. You've learned so much skill. You are snowballing this thing like crazy. You're able to make extra, extra side income. You've learned how to side hustle. You've learned how to run online businesses. You've been able to gain all of these skills, have so much success. Your confidence level is through the roof. So you're able to make money. Now's the time, number 20, is you're able to quit your day job and be full-time making all of your money from your homestead. So I don't wanna be able to sell anything here of like what's best way to make money but for us, it was best to be able to have our essential oils company and do YouTube. But there's also people that make plenty of money by having an Etsy store, Shopify store, all of these skills. You have to assess way in the beginning of what your skill is, what you want your life to be, and you need to be able to put in the work throughout this entire process. You start with the end in mind. So as you're doing all those things, you really know where you're going. Hey, down below is a link to where you can download all of these steps. It's free, you just follow the link down below, put in your email, and then bam, you have these steps that you can go back and reference. Also get on the waiting list for our Get Off Your Tail and Homestead to be able to get the introductory price. Hey, I'm gonna put a video up here of how to turn the problems of recession into a benefit for you to be able to capitalize and build your homestead. You're really gonna like that video. Click it right here.